Uh, mainline, mainline. And then See, you're so far behind. I don't mind it in fish, merfolk, anything that's aggressive like that. But in the control decks, I literally saw player after player lose with standstill in their hand because of standstill. Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I believe that. We have our matchup here. It's going to be um, Steven Nicholas. Steven Nicholas is playing, um, looks like Stoneblade. And his opponent, Danny Batterman, is playing Eureka Show and Tell. Four times Eureka, four times Show and Tell. And then a nice assortment of awesome things to put into play with Show and Tell. Got yep. Four Progenitus, two Angel of Despair, two Blightsteel Colossus, uh, and then obviously we got Emrakles and lots of fun things to do with it. Now there's a new version of Eureka, new as in of like maybe five years ago. What is the new Eureka? Yep, uh, Hypergenesis? That's right. Hypergenesis is uh, slightly different than Eureka. First of all, it doesn't have E equals MC squared in the card art. A very strange choice, I must say. Is that, a, I think, a, a Phil and or Kaya Foglio art? Uh, I'm not sure. But uh, Hypergenesis, I believe, does not let you put any permanent into play. I believe it only lets you put the um, pre-Planeswalker permanents into play. And I think Eureka lets you put any permanent into play. I might have that backwards, though. Yeah, Eureka's a fun card. I, uh... I once saw someone cast Eureka, and his opponent just put Charbelcher stuff into play and killed him. It was pretty interesting <laughs> I believe to watch. It. Eureka does allow you to put any permanent into play, and uh, so Planeswalkers count. I actually knew somebody named Eureka once. She was awesome. Uh, True story. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really know where to go with no, that. No, there's, <laughs> there's nowhere to go with it. <laughs> asides, uh, asides. Against the Eureka deck, we have uh, Stoneforge. Deck, Snapcasters, Geist, Jace, Elspeth, um, Assortment of Counter Spells, Force of Will. This is the Stoneblade deck that you come to know and love or hate, depending on your uh, predilections. Yep. In many ways, this is the um, kind of descendant of um, Cawblade. No Caw, the Squadron Hawk's a little bit too weak for Legacy, but the Stoneforge Mystic by itself is pretty good, and Snapcaster Mage um, makes for a nice two-drop as well. Um, a lot of times this deck also runs Vendillion Click. There are no Vendillion Clicks in uh, Stefan Nicholas's um, deck. In a certain way, uh, kind of reminiscent of the champion last week, who also ran, I believe, zero Vendillion Clicks. Turn 1 Misty Rainforest faces off against Turn 1 Flooded Strand. Danny goes for his fetch right away, getting a basic island, the only basic island in his deck. He also has a basic forest. Let's check out Danny's hand. Looks like he's got the Eureka. Eureka, green, green, too. Take turns putting stuff into play. Preordain, a uh, banned card in modern. He likes one of them, pitch the other one. Wasteland in Steven Nicholas's hand. Not sure what else we've got. Maybe double Wasteland? Um, I don't know. I could tell. Oh, is that an old art something? What is that? I don't know. It's just Wast a little too fast for me. No, in play. What is that? What is oh, the that land? is uh, Mistress Factory. Mistress Factory, okay. Huh, from what set? Uh, that's from the Elspeth versus Tezzeret. Wow. Wow, I've not seen that yet. Now we have Ricky Hayashi doing some acrobatics off camera. I'm not sure exactly why. Points but, directly uh, at me and does a tumble on the ground. That was pretty awesome. I love Ricky Hayashi. I think maybe he just wanted to, to be a little strange there. Mistress Factory coming on in, um, attacking from with Steven Nichols, Nicholas. Brainstorm at end of turn. There is a uh, Misty Reinforced in play for Danny Batterman to be able to make this a quasi-ancestral recall. Yep. One thing about Danny Batterman's deck that I love is the card misdirection. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, it's so much fun. It's such a blowout at times. And then other times he just sits there and does nothing. Well, a lot of what he wants to do is just have the ability to have Eureka spell. resolve. Yeah. And he can't really get away with Pact of Negation because he still has to untap on the subsequent turn and right, win. Right. And he might not have five mana. Gets his basic. It's not very good against the, uh, the Wastelands right now. He's it's, got to get the basics, so. He's out of basics. He's got to get a, a dual yeah. land now. Yeah. There it is. That tropical island is not long to this world. 
we could see a show and tell here. And he's got a nickel bolus in his hand and another land. Oh no, he's going for the Eureka. Eureka! What does this card do? to read it. Well, if you look at it, there's a wizard, <laughs> and uh, next to the wizard is a little uh, strange ghosty thing holding an E equals MC squared sign. <laughs> really not sure <laughs> what's oh, going Oracle on there. Text. There we go. That's what we were waiting on. We have already shown you six rounds of Legacy today. Pardon me, um, one, two, three, five three rounds, rounds. Five rounds of Legacy, rounds three through seven. Six. One of the interesting things about... Nine different archetypes, sorry. Nine, nine different archetypes in those five rounds of, of play. It's always really fun to play Legacy just because like, cards can do something completely different than what they actually read. So it's, you always have to be really careful. It's probably a good idea for him to actually get the Oracle text and see exactly what he needed to do. One of the most commonly played cards that has ridiculously different oracle text than its printed text, Sylvan, Sylvan Library. Library. Yeah. Unless you're playing that card online, do not <laughs> trust the text on the card. No. Mana Leak is standard right now. Nope. We got the, yay, we got misdirection. the misdirection. Tossing a Nicole Bolas. That's sad, I like Nicole Bolas. I do too, I wanted to see him come into play. He might have another one. Can you see his hand? Uh, he's got a Progenitus on top there, so. And it does look like, yeah, he's got another Nicolas. There's a Progenitus. What do you want to play in, put into play, Steven Nicholas? Jace. Jace Haru. What do you there want to put? Are. Nicole Bolas. I wonder who wins in a fight between Nicole Bolas and Jace. Oblivion Ring. Oblivion Ring. Oblivion Ring oh. wins that fight, actually. That's and a sad, sad face for Danny Batterman. I think he's still not looking too shabby. You know, he does look a little sad there, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he's like... Darn it, I was uh, going to have oh. Nicole Bolas fun. Yep, snap Snapcaster. Pass the turn back. This is a winning in round two, isn't it, for these guys? That's, uh, right now, they could potentially be able, actually with their tie breaks, uh, I don't think that's the case. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they are not automatically going to be able to draw in next round if they win. Just brainstorm, got a or uses used Jace's brainstorm ability. I guess you actually have to be careful saying that in this format because that card is actually legal. He's I like to say Jace casts brainstorm. Jace casts brainstorm. Jace casts unsummon. Jace casts. I'm not sure what the ultimate is. Uh. We were just informed that these players are X2, so we will not be getting to see either one of these decks in top eight, more than likely. Progenitus swings in. Hiya. It's a really rough spot to have a Progenitus staring you down right now. Snapcaster. End of turn. He's just trying to put on a clock. <laughs> well, now he can actually attack and just swords his. Can he swords his guy to live? I don't think so. Another turn, no. Um, if the life totals are accurate, uh, he could swords his mistress factory to stay yeah, alive. Yep. There we yep. go. Give him another turn. He's gonna brawl. With everybody. Okay, he does not need to go to uh, three to stay alive. He just go for the two life from the. Yeah. One of those cards is removed from the game, my friend. Not that it might matter. Hopefully, the table judge will catch that. There yep, we yep, go. There Caught. He He's got it. Brainstorm, Manalik, Dig, Swords, and I can't tell what that last one is. Island. That means he is dead. Yep. Well, actually, you know, he can untap uh, Jace into something else that's new. 
Island. One, two, three. None of that'll do it. do it. I don't really know what is out for right there. Let's see. Um. No. No. Actually, there were there were zero outs. I mean, here's the thing though. These players do not yet have each other's deck lists. So what he could be trying to do there is say, I was looking for a Day of Judgment. Yeah. Or I should say a Wrath of God. And his opponent does not know, even though it's unlikely that there's a Wrath of God in the main deck, doesn't know that there's not. That's a very good point. So the stone blade probably cutting swords here. And uh, Spell Pierce hitting his, his deck. Not a lot. Or Spell Snare, excuse me. Spell Pierce hits a lot. Spell Snare is not looking too good against the Show and Tell Eureka deck. One of the cards that actually looks very exciting um, in terms of trying to, trying to fight the Show and Tell Eureka deck is Wrath of God. Yes. Um, now, here's the thing. Since... Stephen Nicholas has Wrath of God in his sideboard, and it's reasonable for him to board it in. There was no good reason then yes. to bluff for yes. a Wrath of God. You don't want to actually communicate that you might have that into your in your in your mix, if that was indeed what he was attempting to do, which yeah. might not be the we case. Still I still feel like the Eureka player plays the same way, even if he feels like. He has Wrath of God. He just throws in one guy in a nickel bolus and says, let's, it might, let's fight. It might not make a difference in terms of the, the final result, yeah. but I think one actually has a, has a rationale behind it, right. and the other one um, does not. Right. So as far as sideboarding goes, uh, Stoneblade, looks like he's cutting spell snares. Uh, probably swords. Okay, real, real quick note. Conley Woods is the Grand Prix Orlando champion. Is Grand Prix Orlando champion Conley Woods defeating Patrick Chapin in the finals. I'm a little sad. Good for Conley, but I, I would have been rooted for Patrick. Yeah. And uh, it looks like Grand Prix Orlando is in the books. It is. Being on East Coast time. Makes Magic noise. continues here, though, at live at the Star City Games Legacy event in Los Angeles. Danny Batterman playing Eureka Show and Tell. One game to zero over Stephen Nicholas. We're playing uh, game two here. They've gone to their sideboards. Um, Stephen Nicholas probably brought in Wrath of God. He might have brought in um, Spell Pierce. Anything else that you think he might have brought in? Um, I think that that's probably about it. Yeah, the paths. He's got paths. They don't do anything. Ley lines don't really do anything. On the other side of the table, um, we see Danny Batterman, and he's playing Eureka Show and Tell. But he might have brought in, I think, Spell Pierces to continue a fight over instance, but Boseju, who shelters all. Yes. That card is a monster. Does a lot of sheltering. Does he want Pithing Needle? Maybe some Pithing Needles. Stops the Jace and Stoneforge. Um. It's about the only thing that's really relevant that I see. Blightstill Colossus seems somewhat, somewhat lackluster. And it's one of he's got so many other huge beaters, but I would have really enjoyed seeing a Nicole Bolas manage to yeah. be in play from showing or from uh, from Eureka. That would have been fun. I actually just heard Our him scream once anyway. Successful. We have eight for standard winner box number two. Please come on back to the Shiv and Dragon. At uh, we'll GP San Diego, again. Danny Batman standard was actually talking to me about this deck, two. and he was telling me, and I was like, oh, just cool, just Shiven another Dragon. generic we'll uh, Eureka deck. He never mentioned to me it had Nicol Bolas in it. And <laughs> I would have been so much more excited had I known about it. He was trying to get to play against me um, all day today, but every time he came over to play, um, I was either engaged in a match of legacy in between rounds, or I was just, you know, um, too busy getting ready to do some more broadcasty work, so didn't end up getting a chance to play against him. Kind of cool watching his deck play now. Yeah. Daniel Batterman, Danny Batterman, a uh, typically a, a, I think, wears the judges' uh, yeah. uniform exactly. um, more often than he wears the, uh, the player hat. He looks really excited to be there, which is it's always fun. Just to enjoy magic. 
Absolutely. Progenitus was uh, one of the boogeymen of, uh, I can't remember if that was Grand Prix Milwaukee, maybe about three or four years ago where there was a legacy Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. And players were running all over the place to try to figure out how to deal with natural order progenitus because it had just made a nice um, reemergence, essentially. And the Grand Prix players running around, finding, trying to find answers, damnation, innocent blood, Tariff was one of the cards that people were really chasing because for the non-black players, Tariff was one of the few answers for a progenitus that was in any way fast enough. Those are always the fun ones. Tariff, for those of you who don't know, white and one, I believe, both players choose their most expensive casting cost creature in play and are forced to repay for it or it is sacrificed. Which is a very, very good answer to progenitus. It's kind of hard to cast that guy. So, uh... Having the mana to pay for him a second time when you didn't pay for him the first time, it's a rough one. Same with Emrakul. Actually, I actually have a funny story about Emrakul. My first Legacy uh, feature match ever, I was playing lands, and my opponent went turn one, uh, Ancient Tomb, Lotus Petal, Show and Tell, and I put a Mind Slaver into play, and he put an Emrakul into play. <laughs> and uh, I lost that one. <laughs> It was not good for me. I was drawing to a one outer Caracas and we didn't get there. I, uh, I definitely have been attacked by an Emrakul, survived, and then won. <laughs> it's always a good feeling yeah. to, to come back from those games. Yeah, well, um, what ended up happening, they cast an Emrakul and they were doing it off of the um, brilliant automata ultimatum combo deck. <laughs> and I was a turbo time warp deck. So when he didn't kill me, I untapped, took several turns in a row, cast my own Emrakul, legend ruling his Emrakul, but also getting a time walk, and then cast a couple more time walks, drew my Emrakul, and killed him with it. Really? That's... That was awesome. Yes. <laughs> that was good say, magic. <laughs> you did all that even after sacrificing the six permanents to yes. Annihilator. Yes. That is impressive. It, it was awesome. <laughs> So I haven't actually been getting to watch this feed. I've been working, and I hear that some somebody was casting some berserks earlier today. Yeah, we saw uh, earlier in the the day we saw round three a death shadow berserk deck. It looks to me like it probably should have won 2-0, but a small misplay from the uh, the pilot of that deck. He he talked to me a little bit later in the day, and he's like still kicking himself rounds later about that. Turn one island from Stephen Nicholas responded to uh, on turn one Danny Batterman's Boseju, who shelters all. Second land from Stephen Nicholas. Boseju makes the spell that it helps cast, if it's a sorcery, I believe, maybe instant or sorcery, um, uncounterable. I believe it is instant or sorcery. We can double check that right now. Instant or sorcery. Yeah. Just verifying that. And they've got to pay two life, and they get one mana towards it. Brainstorm at the end of the turn with a misty rainforest to help fix the uh, draw. Shuffle away the stuff that is the chaff. He's still got his swords in his deck. That's... And it looks like he has Spell Snare, too. There oh, are cards that off. you can swords. Um, for yeah. example, Angel of Despair yeah. is a reasonable one. There yeah, are sometimes still. singletons that you might be afraid of. Uh, yeah. You never know when somebody is cheating a creature into play, what kind of creature they're going to cheat into play. It's definitely a reasonable. I just kind of took a guess and guessed wrong. Yeah, Blightsteel is a nice one to sword. However, I do believe those Spell Snares are pretty much dead. Spell Snare um, targets not a single card in the main and yeah. only two Echoing Truths in the board, which are unlikely to come in in this matchup. Right. Yeah, they are blue, however. Yeah. Third land from Stephen Nicholas after Danny just draws and passes it back. Geist, Geist of St. Trap. That represents a very clock. fast clock. Yep. Four attacks to do 24 damage. One Boseju, and that would be actually three attacks to do 18, which is he enough for the... not like that Geist. Force of Will tossing Force of Will. I can't really see if Danny has the Show and Tell or the Eureka in his hand. He's got the Progenitus there. Is that a City of Traders? City of Traders, yeah. Oh, he's going to play forest. Tropical Island and pass. Oh, sorry, Tropical Island, which is a forest, but uh, yes. Forest Island. It says go. Okay. 
Flooded Strand from Stephen Nicholas. Danny Let's Batterman's see. turn. Fetches. Second Tropical Island. With no. Danny having the Besaju, if he has a, a spell, he pretty much has to cast it. There's, there's no point in actually representing counter magic, is there? I think that that's fairly accurate. I mean, there are other things he could do at end of turn. Right. City of Traders joins the party. Boseju does two, making uh, Danny go down to 16. We got a Eureka coming. Five mana. One of it will be floating. It will be one colorless. Eureka cannot be countered. Brainstorm. Looking for good cards to put into play. Tundra. Planes and... Looks like land, land, land. I didn't see what that third one was. I think it was land, land, land. Looks like a mana leak. Mana dead. Yep. Puts it away. Doesn't like it. That Oblivion Ring that he happened to have in that first game was a singleton. Only one Oblivion Ring in his main deck. And sideboard, too, actually. Yep. See what, he, see what he's, he's digging for. Probably just trying to find something interesting to put into play. Got a Snapcaster. Snapcaster for Brainstorm. Looking for something good to put into play. There aren't very many good things for him to put into play that come on the power level of oh, the cards that his opponent has. Jason at Geist, it looks like. <clears throat> He's in trouble. Doesn't look happy. Let's see what happens. Resolves. Progenitus. Progenitus. Uh-oh. Jace? Tundra. Tundra. That works. Angel of Despair. Angel of Despair. Geist of St. Traft. Pything Needle. Nice. Snapcaster. City of Traders. He's got a... Did you say he's a Jace in his hand? Yeah, I believe Might so. be worth just hanging on to that Jace, not putting it into play. After this turn, untapping, then casting the Jace. When we find out what the Pything Needle names after the Eureka resolves, that'll be what we'll share with you. Angel of Despair. Jace for Needle. Yeah, the Pything Needle name's Jace. Very reasonable choice. Protects his Angel of Despair from a possible Jace bounce. The uh, Snapcaster comes into play, hits the Brainstorm already in the yard, and he can do that anytime he wants, so... Uh, it's a very good call on Danny's part. I'm not sure how relevant it is regardless, but he definitely... Swords. Again. Wasteland, Wasteland. The Progenitus is just so big. Yeah, he is. And I, was that actually, pardon me, that was land, land, land? No, it was I swords, mean, sorry, wasteland. swords, wasteland, wasteland? Yeah. Okay. If he's got a Jace in his hand and he can't use it, that means the game is over. Yeah. There's no way the Progenitus can be raced. Um, Steven trying to uh, sculpt some kind of position that can make him get out of this. But the only way he can get out of this is if Danny doesn't do something that he ought to. Wasteland dropped. 
Kills a tropical. Swords the angel despair. Puts Danny up above 20. Attack with everybody. Race. Gets an angel. Blocks the guys. Block the guys. Take eight. It says go. Yeah. Attack. And I think that's going to be all she wrote. Steven goes down to eight. Untaps. Yep. Shows him. Yeah. Yeah, the Pything Needle there locked the game out. If the Pything Needle hadn't been there, um, he could have cast on his turn a Jace, activated its ability, and had yet one more turn to activate its ability again to try to find an answer to the Progenitus. Those answers are few and far between. Um, they basically count to Wrath of God, and, and that's it.